let me show you some tips and tricks for CMF Phone 2 Pro. I'm gonna show you some example tips that you can use on this phone. So right from the get-go you may have noticed that we have this search bar, uh, Google search bar at the bottom of the screen which cannot be actually removed. Usually if you press and hold your finger on the widget you have the option to remove it. For example over here as you can see we have the option to remove but not in this case. However there is still an option that allows you to turn on or off the widget. So in order to get rid of it we can go to settings, over here choose customization and then we can go to layout. And there we go, over here we have the search bar so we can hide the search bar pretty easily. Not only that, in these settings we can also enable the app names, as you can see right now we have the names of the apps, of all these apps that we have in the home screen, which is disabled by default. And if you prefer to have the names then of course you can turn it on like this. Besides that, in personalization we have one more option that I want to show you and that is the icon pack because you may have this icon pack that you can see over here on the screen. And if you actually like it, you can apply it also for the app drawer. All you need to do is simply disable this option, apply to home screen only. So now if I go to the app drawer, as you can see, icons in the app drawer look pretty much the same. However, if you prefer the standard appearance of icons, then you can switch from nothing to default. And there we go, we have default icon pack. They do not look uh, the same anymore. And speaking of widgets, there are also lock screen widgets that we can easily add or remove. So we're gonna go back to customization once again, but this time we're gonna swipe over here to the lock screen, and then we can tap on the widgets. I have my widgets added here, uh, but we can of course remove them. We have couple of um, spaces over here, but you can also expand the widget area by making the clock a little bit smaller. And over here we have some nothing widgets that we can add to the list. We can simply tap in order to find different widgets that we can use. So let's say I'm gonna tap widget about the uh, weather. Uh, let's actually close it and let's add some other stuff. We can also add quick settings buttons as well. So if you tap to quick setting, then let's say I'm gonna choose this one over here. And we can choose what should be the button for, so let's say I'm going to use do not disturb mode, and there we go. Of course we can change the position of the widgets, we can place them pretty much anywhere we want to. We have these squares that are used as slots, so we can move them around, as you can see over here. So it is definitely convenient to uh, create your own lock screen. So this is how we can have widgets in the lock screen. You may also notice that we can have bigger folders as for example we have this Google folder by default in the home screen. We can press and hold our finger in order to shrink the folder and if you have already a small folder then you can enlarge it. Not only that we also have pretty cool customization options if you go to customize then we have different styles. We have the circle, for this is of course for bigger folders. For smaller folders we only have the default style and cover but in the case of bigger ones we also have these grids, so more uh, square-ish um, size or shape actually. There's also the circle and the cover, and the cover is actually pretty cool. It allows you to mask whatever you have inside these folders. Not only you can use these images, you can also go to emojis and you can use a certain emojis. The list goes on and on, so you have lots of different choices. So let's say I'm gonna choose, um, let's say, there we go, something like this. And of course, this is how it looks like. Now I changed the appearance of the folder. Now let's move to the app drawer because over here, as you can see, we have these app suggestions, which are also enabled by default. So we can tap on these three dots in the top right corner in order to go to the app drawer settings and we can disable app suggestions over here. Now if we go back, these app suggestions are gone. There is also an option to switch to the Smart App Drawer, which resembles the app library that we have on iOS devices. So if you prefer to have these categories and apps are sorted automatically to these categories, you cannot really change their categories or folders. But if you prefer it that way, then of course you can use something like this. The only thing that is missing here is the app library at the top, so you cannot just swipe down in order to open the full list of apps you are pretty much stuck with these categories. Uh, but it's still pretty cool that they allows you to use that feature and switch it back. 
Not only that, if you actually prefer to have some apps added to the top, you can pin apps so you have immediate access at the top. So for example, I can press and hold my finger on settings and then we have this pin icon. So if I tap on it, settings will be moved all the way to the top. I can do the same thing with every app that I have listed over here. Sometimes it is just pinned to top, so you can use it in order to have certain apps over here at the top of this list. And there is also a hidden feature that is available from the app drawer, and that is the private space. All you need to do is simply swipe to the right over here. So if you swipe, you will be able to access private space, which is really easy to set up. And private space allows you to create a private environment where you can hide apps and create a password. So in order to access these apps that you hide in the private space, you will need to enter the specific password. You can also set up a fingerprint as well. And even if you already have fingerprint, you need to scan it again. So you can, for example, use a completely different finger for that if you want to, of course. And if you care about privacy and keeping your apps privately, then you can also go to settings over here, choose apps, and you have the option to use an app locker, which allows you to create, once again, a password for apps. So instead of using the private space, you can also just use the password. So these apps will still be visible over here in the app drawer, but in order to open them, you will need to use a password. And there is also the cloner, uh, which allows you to duplicate apps. It is also accessible in the app settings. Over here, if you go to cloud apps, you should be able to create duplicated versions of apps of your choice. Over here, you can also tap on see other apps in order to unfold the full list of apps. So if you create the second version of the app, you will see it, for example, in the app drawer. You can quickly create notes by using the essential key on the right side that is below the power button. So the essential key is used to create special notes. You can write your note over here. You can also make a voice recording. If you do this on the home screen, then you can also tap on the home screen in order to capture the screenshot. And if you are not in the home screen, if you are, for example, in an app or something, usually the screenshot is included anyway. But this is a pretty good way to create or write something down if you have certain ideas and you want to quickly note something, then you can make a note like this and save it. Afterwards, you can go to the essential space, which you can find in the upper drawer, and you can find a bunch of different um, notes that you have created like this. We can also, once again, go back to settings. And there is, I think, one more thing that I want to show you in the uh, settings. Actually, two more things. The first thing is in display. More precisely over here, we can go to status bar and we can hide certain information that can be clustered over here on the status bar. So for example, I don't want to see this key over here, which is for VPN. So I can just tap over here in order to hide this information, this icon, so that I have space for other stuff over here. But I can, for example, show the information about the internet speed. I can hide Bluetooth, for example, if... Um, so let's say if I connect something uh, by using Bluetooth, then I don't see this icon over here. And we can hide pretty much almost everything, uh, every information that is accessible or visible in the status bar. So pretty good option that allows you to customize what appears in the status bar. And the second thing that I want to show you is in special features. Over here, if you go to gestures, you should be able to find a bunch of different options that can be quite useful. Uh, but I think one of the most important one, uh, ones actually is the screenshot the gesture because it is disabled by default, but you can enable the three finger swipe so you don't have to use button shortcut in order to capture a screenshot. Instead, you can just swipe down with three fingers to take a full screenshot or you can press and hold and then drag down in order to select the area that should be captured so you have a partial screenshot. By the way, by default, of course, we use the gestures for navigation. If you prefer to use the buttons, then over here in gestures settings, you have the navigation mode where we can switch to three button navigation. And for gesture navigation, there is also additional gesture that is available only for gesture navigation. There, there are actually two uh, hidden gestures, uh, really. And the first one is the access to the assistant. So we can uh, swipe from one of the bottom corners towards the middle of the screen in order to open the assistant, whether it is Google Assist Assistant or Gemini. We can just swipe from the corner like this and we can access the assistant. 
and the second gesture is the pop-up view or the floating window. So if I start swiping from the bottom, like this, as you can see over here, we have this preview, drag and release here for pop-up view. So this is how we can have a floating window, a pretty cool gesture that can be quite useful in some cases. And that's about it. So if you found this video helpful, leave a like and subscribe if you think there are some tips and tricks that I missed. And then, of course, you can share them in the comments. And that's all. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe and see you in my next videos.